has there been anything for good or for bad that surprised mm -hmm. you? I mean, it's yeah. surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Kangaroos just on campus in some places is pretty surprising. Yes. <laughs> The most dangerous animals are the birds. Like they attack you, they're so aggressive. I've never seen in any country birds as aggressive as these ones. Finn just <laughs> destroyed Australian international education by <laughs> speaking the truth. How good is this? Yeah, it's awesome. G'day and welcome to Choosing Your Uni. I'm Rob Maliki and today I've got a very special guest from Antwerp in Belgium. Finn, Perfect. it's lovely to have you here. <laughs> lovely to having me. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about what it's like coming to study in Australia as an international student. Tell me about yourself. How did you end up in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually a funny question because it wasn't that straightforward. Yeah. So actually, I worked as an international journalist and I lived and travelled across all the world. And Australia was just the last continent I had to go to. Is that right? That's exactly right. Why were we on the bottom of the list? Because <laughs> you're on the bottom of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Where did you first arrive um, in Australia? I flew in in Cairns. Ah, okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then? And then, interestingly, I bought a car. Mm -hmm. I travelled around Australia, but just the northern part. Mm -hmm. So I went straight to the centre to Uluru. And then I drove up to the Northern Territories, to Darwin. And then I drove to the west side, to Broome. And then I crossed all the way back to the East Coast. Wow. <laughs> You've probably seen more of Australia than most Australians. That's what many tell me, yeah. yeah. Incredible. And in all of that, what was your favourite place? Ooh, it's a hard one because I obviously love the Sunshine Coast, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yeah. But I also actually spent one year up in the Whitsundays, mm -hmm. which is obviously a very beautiful area. And I was there also during the COVID lockdown, which was pretty nice because there were actually no tourists. So we yeah. had the entire beautiful area for us. <laughs> so what were you doing out there? Were you working? I worked as a journalist. Yeah. So in the beginning, I worked still for overseas media and then for an Australian podcast platform. Yeah. And then after COVID, I worked for a local newspaper, actually. Yeah, incredible. For those people who haven't visited here, can you describe the Wit Sundays? <laughs> yeah, it's like paradise, hey, in one word. Like, so it's all the white beaches, the islands, the blue, blue, blue ocean. You've got like whales, you've got dolphins, you've got beautiful diving, obviously the Great Barrier Reef. So I don't know, it's just like living a holiday all day, all <laughs> month long. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so from there, what happened next? I reached a point that I realized that my journalism wasn't enough. So I specialized in the environment. And after all those years of reporting on it, I felt like I wanted to do more instead of just writing and so I decided to change my career. To do so, I knew I had to go and study back because I, but I wasn't sure what, right? So it's like, okay, what do I want to study? I know that one day I want to work for the United Nations in global mm. policy making, but maybe I should become like environmental engineering or should I study environmental management or I'm not sure. So I started doing my research to figure out what next step I would take. Can you tell me about that moment where you realised mm -hmm. that what you were doing wasn't enough. Do you remember the moment where you were just like, oh shit? Yeah, I think it's just like, you know, it built up gradually and then one day I'm just literally standing, it's so funny, I, like I'm just standing and thinking, what am I doing? Like, it's just not enough. Like I had the so many conversation with somebody saying like, ah, oh, Finn, like climate change is all not real and go like, no. <laughs> and then I think one of the signing moments was going to dive in the Great Barrier Reef mm. and seeing how much had bleached and died off. And I remember looking so much forward to diving in the Great Barrier Reef, but coming up, I was honestly crying. Hey. Right, yeah. And the diving instructor is like, do you want to go for another one? And like, no, like <laughs> I need to process this. Like, and that's when I realized in talking to the locals, this no good like you know we have to act and we have to act fast and just creating awareness is not enough like we have to contribute yeah mm -hmm. and so after you had that kind of moment because it's a big decision mm -hmm. to stay in Australia and study yes how did you can you explain that process of how you sort of went oh my god this is not enough I need to do more yeah to getting to the point where you're like okay I'm gonna stay on the other side of the world yeah. Because it's not close. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> well, it's a long way from home. I'm going to stay to do the masters. Mm -hmm. Well, it's was well, like a, different factors that contributed to the decision. Like one was because I know climate change is a global thing. I wanted to study in English anyways. Okay. Because obviously my previous degrees are like not English, and English is like a global language. So that was one thing. And then second was, I just. I don't know, I felt like I didn't want to go back to Europe either. I just wanted to stay where I was. And because, this is bizarre, but because of Australia was such a laggard 
in like the climate change thing, I thought there's a lot of opportunity here to improve a lot. <laughs> so if I stay, I might as well be able to make a bigger impact. Yeah. How did people feel when you, like family, friends, oh, when you said, oh, by the way. Yeah, many people thought I was nuts, eh? Like, <laughs> obviously, like I would give up my career and then I would pay a lot of money and put my life on hold for three years. So many people are like, uh, and also, can't you study like back in Europe or can't you study somewhere like closer by? I was like, no. Like, <laughs> so yeah, there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm in the beginning, but then when I explained my vision and why I would do it, then they started supporting me. I think you're really courageous because a lot of people might have that first moment. You yeah. know, they might have that moment where they realize, oh wow, mm -hmm. there's this problem that I need to solve that's bigger than, bigger than me. And they might even get to the next step of thinking like what to do about it. Mm -hmm. But it's almost like there's this wall. Yes. That you have to you have to somehow get over that sorry, fucking wall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know. That's, that's a big step. Like that's almost the biggest step. And you yeah, did sure. it. Yeah, so true. But you're so right, because that's it, right? In the beginning you have an idea and you come up with oh, would it be possible because XYZ might prevent mm. me. But then you figure out that this XYZ isn't as big as you thought and once you start it, it actually isn't. Like, you know, there's no wall. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> yeah, you know, that's it. like it's an imaginary thing, hey? Once you like make your decision and you go, I feel like, yeah, it's so much easier than you thought. <laughs> it, that, it's so true. It's mm -hmm. so true. It's like the wall is actually the one in our minds that, that yes. holds us back. Yeah, exactly. for sure. <laughs> and then so from, from there, you've made this decision that you're going to stay in Australia. Yeah. Then you have the very hard decision of like, well, where yes. and, and what? <laughs> to talk me through that. Yeah, that was an interesting process <laughs> because I, so I knew what I wanted to get out of it. I didn't know how to get there. Okay, so what yeah. did you decide that you wanted out of it? Like so I wanted to change my career and eventually try to work for the United Nations on a global level. So I knew I wanted to get there in my career, but I just did not know how to get there. And I didn't know like what would be the best uh, degree that would prepare me to get more insight in like the all the parts of climate change like so that's what i knew i wanted to get out of it but i wasn't sure should i become for example environmental engineer mm. and like literally design solutions that was my first idea right <laughs> but then i started like researching which universities in australia offer the course so i applied for some in melbourne and in uh, adelaide and then i decided <laughs> to embark on this funny journey around australia and go and actually visit all the universities oh wow mm -hmm. that's crazy uh, I know. You're crazy. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like, you know, I was going to stay, if I was going to commit like to a degree, yeah. I would commit three years at least staying in the same spot. Mm. And because I'm a traveler, I know myself and I knew like, oh, I, I'm not going to get itchy feet, you know? So it's like, I might as well travel all of Australia. I have seen it all. So if I choose the spot to stay, I know that I'm not missing out on anything else either. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Where did you go on, on that trip? Yes. <laughs> well, it took me literally all around Australia. So I started up north in the Whitsun days, mm -hmm. drove along all the east coast, then all across the south to like over the Nullarbor, and then all back up the west coast until Broome. Yeah. And then from Broome, I crossed back to the east coast. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so in that, tell people about the Null Null Nullarbor. Oh yeah. That's I've driven the Nullarbor. <laughs> Describe the Nullarbor for people. Well, it's... um. Because like, it's like something that we've achieved, isn't it? it? It's so true because you're just driving and driving and driving for days and you don't see anything else. And you cross several time zones, remember? Because I remember at some point coming like a roadhouse and there's like three different clocks and I'm like, can you tell me what time you are? Because I'm lost. Nice. <laughs> but it's beautiful because you cross all these ancient ecosystems actually. And you can actually see like where the ocean has been and how the ancient like Australian geography looked like. Yeah. So it's like you're not only traveling through like the geography in like the country, but also through time. Yeah. And I thought it's so beautiful because when you're crossing to the middle of nowhere, you're crossing around along the coastline and you can actually see down and they're like the whales hatching and stuff. Oh. So it's so heroic almost. Yeah, I mean this is this is something that people coming to Australia, if you come for tourism, you might go to Sydney, maybe go to Uluru, Great Barrier Reef. But then you have this iconic drive, which literally takes you halfway across the country yes. from Adelaide to Perth. And it's extraordinary. I mean, some of it's just desert. Yes. And then some of it's, it's really quite incredible, like the, the rolling hills and the wood yeah. and just nothing around for a thousand kilometers. So true. You're about as isolated as you can get on Earth. So true. Yeah. But it's so beautiful, I think, yeah. So before we talk about Sunshine Coast, where else made your shortlist? Um, because there are very few people yeah. like you who uh -huh. 
have not only traveled and visited so many unis, yeah. but then actually gone to study at them, chosen one and studied it at mm -hmm. one. So where yeah. else made the shortlist? I was pretty convinced actually to go first to Adelaide, but then it was just, it's just very cold there. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, mm, if it wouldn't be that cold, definitely, because I thought it was very interesting what they had to offer and their history, because they obviously have a longer history. They have more iconic people mm. who graduated there and more meaningful research is mean to say, but like, you know, they got this very long history already. This is like reputation. University of Adelaide? University of Adelaide, okay. yeah. And then another one was when I was in Perth. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very interesting as well. But um, then I actually already had made up my mind to come back here. Okay. So maybe if it was earlier in the decision making process. But that's, that's funny. I, I feel the same about Sunshine Coast and Perth. I, oh, yeah. I feel like for students, these are my two favorite places in the country. Yeah. And even down to Brisbane, I, I would include Brisbane, Sunshine Coast mm -hmm. in, that, in that equation. I just feel like they're beautiful places and they're more relaxed, yeah. but really good quality of education mixed with good lifestyle. So true. And warm. Like they're and not warm. as cold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Although Perth is in WA, so Western Australia, but some of the locals say WA stands for windy always because it, it's really, <laughs> really so windy there all the time. <laughs> all right, so you've made this decision that it's back to the Sunshine Coast. Mm -hmm. And how did that unfold? Well, honestly, I haven't regretted it, eh? Like, since the moment I arrived, I'm just, I feel like it was the right choice by all means. Because it's funnily enough, I literally arrived the morning of all week. So it's oh, like, wow. <laughs> I just literally came in travel mode. But that was the cool thing because I wanted to make it to all week to understand what was going on at university beyond your degree. So I went around and talked to all the staffs what they have to do, including to the student reps. And so the first thing I was like, oh, there are like science, tech and engineering student representatives. And I asked them, like, how can I join you? And they're like, ah, oh, just sign up here and you take your time for your training, you know, you know. And then a week later, they had the first meeting, so I joined in and they're like, you're fast, like, yeah. <laughs> but that was a cool thing because there's so many opportunities I found, like if you look for it, you can find. And since then, I've just been involved in so many things. And it looks like I'm here, like, I'm only here since a year and a half, mm -hmm. but it feels like so much longer if I look at what I've been able to do since. What advice would you have for somebody thinking of coming and starting in Australia? Let's start with that. I think find out two things. One, what you would want to get out of your education and find out what the university has to offer. Because I feel like every university has their particular strengths. So it's smart to choose a university that aligns with what you want to get out of your, uni yeah, your degree, such as like, I am very interested in environments, obviously. And I know like this university, they're like having all these sustainability initiatives. They rank, rank really highly internationally on sustainability. So obviously I'm going to get out here more than I would get out of a university that maybe is not as passionate about sustainability. Yeah. But so every university has their different expertise. So I think that's important. And the second thing I think as well, it's look beyond your degree. Mm. Like find if this university fits within what you want out of study and out of life in general, because eventually you're going to spend some time of your life here, right? Like even if it's only a semester or a few years, I feel like that inspires you to be, to do well in your study as well. Mm. And like, you know, studying in Sydney, big city is totally different than studying here and just being able to sit outside in the green, go for a surf, like it's, yeah, what do you want out of life and find that as well in your university? You seem to me somebody that's very self-aware you know, you spend a lot yeah. of time, I mean, you're a traveller, right? Exactly. Uh, I can see you've got this energy for life, which is beautiful. Yeah. What about for somebody that, that has never asked themselves that question before? Yeah. It's hard. Like, where do you even start? Where do you start mm -hmm. um, in terms of asking yourself those, those questions? Yeah, good point. Maybe it is becoming more self-aware. Hey? Like, maybe mm. it's even the small things, like, look at what did you enjoy in high school? Like, what were the courses you enjoyed? Or just like in your day-to-day -day life, what are the things that make you excited? or what are the things that turn you off? And then find for those things in a bit of a bigger scale. Like, for example, if you're living somewhere like in a small town and you really don't like the small town mentality, then by all means, choose a university like in a big city or something. But if you're on the other hand, somebody who enjoys time out in nature stuff, choose this kind of university. So yeah. maybe like look to the little things of your life and find them replicated in a university. That's really good advice. I, I like that. I think people really need to be honest with themselves. I mean, I get asked a yeah. lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Oh, should I go to you know big city university or yeah. this university out in a regional area? And my response is always, well, like, 
the education is only one part of it. So yes. what else do you want from this experience? Yes, so true. And, and what aligns with you? Quite often in, when you're researching, all you see is like rankings, yeah. star ratings and ranked number one for whatever. And that's quite confusing because it actually mm -hmm. doesn't tell you very much. No. And unis are very good at putting their high ranking yes. at the top. <laughs> and there's, there's one institution in Australia that, for example, is ranked, I can't say the exact ranking because it'll give it away, but you know, on the global ranking, very, very high. Mm -hmm. But then for student satisfaction, they're actually at the bottom. So true. And so what's important to you, like prestige or, mm -hmm. or being part of like, you know, community, yeah. smaller place, more relaxed atmosphere, mm -hmm. better lifestyle, less stress. Yes. You know, <laughs> those are the kind of questions to ask. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And how's the course been here? Oh, good. So yeah, I studied environmental management. And I love it, like since early, like since every course, like I'm always so excited when like I release my new course and like, oh my God, I'm going to study this one and this one. <laughs> it's just so interesting because it's an interdisciplinary course. So you got like some economics, some politics, some hardcore science, like a lot of different things. Because like things like climate change, they're just so complex and they don't fit in only engineering or only law. It's like just all those bits and pieces together. Yeah. So it's beautiful to have them all united in one degree. So what I love about that is that, I mean, you have something very specific that you want to do, mm -hmm. but even still you're getting this broad view. And I imagine yeah. as you go, you'll find areas where you start to step in yeah. more closely and to, to follow and be, become even more specialized. Mm -hmm. so it sounds like a really nice approach. Yeah. Basically to, for anybody. So true. Yeah, and that's always the nice thing. I feel like my course, but many other courses here as well, they have a lot of electives or a major and a minor and stuff. So even if you take a certain degree, then you can still compose it towards your own interests or what you want indeed more specialize in. Let's talk more about um, environmental management, mm -hmm. like really concretely. Let's talk about some of those courses that you've done and mm -hmm. which ones have you enjoyed the most? What surprised you? Basically in environmental management, what it actually prepares you for is to literally manage the environmental side of things and that could be a company like a construction company or like a university but it could also be like a government and so depending on any project they would do they have to employ somebody who looks at the environmental impact of their business for example here at the university if they want to create a new building they have to check all right is this going to impact the habitat of the wallabies or is this going to impact their goal? Yeah. It's going to impact them. <laughs> or like, uh, Sorry guys. Yeah. Just close your ears. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so um, yeah, all, like all those bits and pieces. And so obviously on the university, like it's small scale, but like you could do it as well, like on a council level. So you would go like every time when there's a new construction or a new project, you'll have to make sure that they comply with environmental legislation. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't go it to the global level. And that's when you go and look at more like in the global policy making and climate change and like the, uh, holding the oars and like bigger problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So have you found, so is climate change your big problem that you want to try to help solve? It's like, I feel like all our environmental issues are interconnected. Mm. And so climate change is obviously big times on the agenda and it's the most urgent one, but it's also related to all the other ones we are creating, like the loss of biodiversity or degradation of soil or water, or like all these bits and pieces make that our planet is also less resilient to cope with any problem coming forward from climate change. I mean, so my first degree yeah. was a Bachelor of Science. Oh, so cool. that really resonates for me. Yeah. And I'm really passionate the, about this area. Yeah. But do you get depressed sometimes about the state of things? <laughs> you don't look like it. I mean, you're yeah, an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, see, I always feel this like when there's, obviously when reality catch you up, you go like, oh, we are in big troubles, right? And if we do not step up now, we're in for even worse. Like it is no good. Like what we're doing at the point, it's not good at all. And it, yeah, it would make you like sad and angry. But I think that's actually a good thing because it helps me to energize. And you know, the days that I sometimes get tired or like not motivated, I'm like, no, but I have to. Like, you know, <laughs> we need to do something. On the other hand of that, you can see that there are many people like myself who are doing interesting research or interesting work in it. And you see that things are moving. Yeah. And I think that's what makes, gives me hope. Like, there are so many solutions out there, so many good things. If we just could like combine them or like accelerating them, like I feel there is a solution. Yeah, it's kind of like finding that gratitude for the things that are going well yes. and like hanging on to that and chasing that. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I mean, no one of us is gonna solve that no. problem, are we? Mm -hmm. But collectively, if everybody's making that little difference yeah. and contributing, then, then eventually we can 
achieve some really, really big things. Yes, yeah, so true. And maybe that's, that's also true for other disciplines is like, mm -hmm. you know, some people, you know, you might feel bogged down about whatever is in your life. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a good lesson just about life in general, yeah. right? It's like, just start with the little things that you can influence. Yes, yeah. so true. And this, I think, why it's so nice to come to university as well, because you're with so many people who are also inspired and also working towards the same goal. So you actually can inspire each other. And like, on top of that, like there's many little things you already can do. Like there's small initiatives such as we have here like the Enectus group. Okay. And we, um, it's actually cool. So we're just like a bunch of students and we organize projects based on social entrepreneurship. So it's a bit business minded, but not for profit, but like to make the world better, nice. if that makes sense. And so this is something we can do here and now. And because we do it together, we actually feel like, hey, we are doing something. We actually take agency over these problems that could be like... You take agency over it. Yeah, so you take actually agency instead of like just sitting back and thinking, ah, oh, that sucks and I wish this wasn't that way and I wish this was better. You can actually say like, okay, but what can we do about it? <laughs> the cool thing about Enectus is that it is a project that's done by university students across the entire world. So we got across Australia, a lot of different universities, they got their own Enectus team, but also all universities in the entire world. Mm. So it's so cool. So every year we participate to like a national competition and then all the Australian teams come together and they actually present or like pitch their idea to each other. Nice. And then they got like judged by a professional jury. And if they win, they exceed to the, uh, to the global competition, such as was last week in Puerto Rico. Cool. But it's so nice because you're united with all students who are equally inspired to do something better. And those are the moments indeed that like, all right, things suck, <laughs> but we're doing something, you know? <laughs> Isn't that almost like the best part of going to uni? Yeah. Like just the fact that you can connect with people who you never would have met in a different no. walk of life. Mm -hmm. But here you are solving a problem together or sharing values and ideas yeah. and working on things together. So true. Mm. Honestly, that's one of the reasons why I also decided to stop my journalism and come back to university because I felt I needed my tribe. You know, as a journalist, I'm always on my own. But it's like, nah, we need like this kind of <laughs> huge collaboration. And a university is interdisciplinary, right? You're not only with your science students, but also with psychology students or business students. And you need this kind of crossover to solve these problems. What's that like coming back after, mm -hmm. you know, you've done earlier degrees yeah. and now you're coming back. What's that feel like? Yeah, it's funny, hey? Like initially it was weird because I got equally nervous. Like, oh my God, I don't know how to do this anymore. <laughs> and like you got nervous for your first assignments and stuff. But then you're so fast back into it and it's just, it's just so nice. It reminds you, oh, and this is why I studied before, you know. <laughs> is it easy? Yeah, I think so. But because as a journalist, I imagine your ability to research, summarize, mm -hmm. write, yeah. do all of that would just be ballistic. It is easier. I, I definitely think so. But on the other hand, I think also I put more pressure on myself. Ah. Because, you know, I know I have certain capabilities already. So I feel like I can't do only the bare minimum because that would not be challenging myself. So I feel like, yeah, I want to get more out of it than my first degree. And you're, you're paying a lot to be here, yes. right? Let's talk about being an international student in Australia. Yeah. What's it been like? Interesting. Yeah? <laughs> Interesting is a good word. Like, you know, obviously the study experience is different. I think the way universities work is very different from how I studied in Europe. Like for a lot of different reasons. Like, for example, one of the things I found most remarkable is in Europe, there's a big hierarchy like you would speak to your teachers always with like professor mister blah blah all the titles and here people call themselves with their first name nice and it was so awkward in the beginning it's like i cannot really call my professor noni like what <laughs> it felt so yeah, it's not unnatural. even a name it's like a nickname isn't yeah. it <laughs> so it's like oh Dougie. no <laughs> yeah. and so in that like it's not only the names it's even in class you actually can talk to your teachers so it's so much nicer it's there's so much more connection i feel between teaching people and the students whereas like in europe there's oof, there's a huge gap like and this actually enriches the experience i feel because you actually can for example debate content or like after class they always say oh what research are you actually working on and you learn so much more than only like content content yeah nice mm -hmm. and so have you followed that lead have you actually spoken with academics who said oh i'm researching this thing and then participate in that or helped in that or has that opened some doors for you? Yeah, it definitely did, hey. Like, so, first of all, I just take every opportunity after tutorial and stuff to talk to my teachers Very and nice. ask extra questions or like, and indeed, sometimes if they have research opportunities, they will discuss, so like, oh guys, we need somebody on this project or, so that's actually 
yeah, something very valuable. Or even after guest lectures, staying after and like, oh my God, can you expand on this or that? And it's just so beautiful and really willing to do like an honors or a master's or a PhD. And I already like talked to so many teachers of mine who were like, oh, we're working on this or we are working on that. And it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. it's so nice. Yeah. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about the study experience in Australia. What about like the lifestyle here? I mean, you'll probably yeah. know better than almost any other international students. You've been <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> No, yeah, a lifestyle, wow. Like, especially here at the Sunshine Coast, because it's so much more relaxed. Like, one of the things I think is most remarkable and very typical for here, or like for Australia in general, is like people just go early in the morning for a surf and then come to, to university and work. Awesome. So the mindset is so much different. You can tell, like, people are more relaxed because it's just able, you're just able to relax, like, even early in the morning, or I like to be early up. And nice. I always go like at 5 a.m. or something to the gym or for a walk. And there's so many people out there and everyone's, good morning, how are you? And like, it's so much nicer than like living, for example, back in Europe where it's cold and people are Wah. like a bit grumpy because yeah, it's cold and dark and everybody's very fast paced. And here it's just more chill. Like you've got the wallabies running around, that kind of things. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you surf? Well, I am a beginning, nice. beginner surfing, yeah. <laughs> because, because this is like the Sunshine Coast is one of the great places in Australia to pick up a surfboard for the first time. Yeah. And there's lots of good beaches here where you can, where you can start to surf, which is yes. awesome. Nice. And then what about other things to get involved in? How does it compare here? In, so you've talked a little bit about, mm -hmm. you know, being involved in clubs and things like that. Yeah. What's that kind of extracurricular life like in, a, I mean, here at the Sunshine Coast, for example? Yeah. Actually, it's pretty interesting. Like, especially at this university, because it's such a small university, it's so much easier to get involved. And when you're involved, to get to know everybody. Mm. <laughs> so I think there's a lot of opportunities if you're just willing to grab them. Mm. Like they got a huge like student as partners network and student representatives network, and you just join and then you can like go volunteering and stuff, but also be a student representative and advocate for other students. And for example, I got lucky and got elected even to the university council and then to the student senate and stuff. And therefore, because of that, I got so many other opportunities as well. So there are just so many things that you could do if you're looking for it. Why should people get involved in that stuff? A very good question. Because I think, honestly, it's more important even than your course content. Like a university gives you so much opportunities to learn other skills than content only. Like, you know, it's your interpersonal skills. It's skills like public speaking. It's skills like event management. If you're like going to volunteer on an event, it just learns you that life is about more than knowing the books. Hmm. Because even with any degree, not only environmental management, but if you know your content, but you don't got your people skill or you don't got your selling skills, you're not really gonna get far. That's, it's very true. In fact, and this will make you laugh. Before we met today, yeah. the number of people that I've spoken to today, and they're like, oh, you're interviewing Finn this afternoon. She's so awesome. <laughs> and somebody was like, oh, we want to try and get her a job because she's incredible. <laughs> so it's, it's true. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. you know so many people here who know yeah. you, and you become the first person that, that they want to come and find. Yeah. So it's almost like when you get involved in that stuff, you flip it from being like, you're the student and you've got to go looking for the opportunities yeah. to the opportunities come and find you. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That is so true. But isn't that in life in general? Yeah. Like if you ever want to make a career in whatever or even just being a hu good human being, you know, like if you give, things come back as well. That's so true. I think that's the philosophy for life is is just give first. Yes. And, and when you interact with, with people, partic and particularly when it comes to like work, side of things mm -hmm. once you get out into your career and what have you is is everybody's always asking you for something yeah they're always asking you can you can you give me some time to work on this we need to sell you this thing whatever mm -hmm. and very few people flip that over yeah and say what can I do for you exactly and obviously like the more that you give to other people the more mm -hmm. likely they are to be like oh wow you've been so generous with me mm -hmm. like I want to engage with you further yeah true yeah. so true and it's just nice hey I feel like it's a nice way to live, isn't it? it exactly. Because I always thought, like, I don't want these three years of studying to be like putting my life on hold. Like, I want to be able to make an impact and do something whilst I'm studying. And these kind of extracurricular opportunities, they give you the, yeah, the momentum to do actually things while you're studying. Nice. Yeah. So for an international student thinking of coming to Australia, mm -hmm. the most important thing, yeah. where are the top five places in Australia they need to visit? Oh, yeah. I actually like this question because <laughs> People always tend to go to the same hotspots, right? They go to Melbourne or Sydney and then get stuck somewhere or along the East Coast. I think people should go to the West Coast for sure. 
like like we discussed before like Perth is so beautiful but not only Perth like Margaret River the entire area and the Ningaloo Reef oh Ningaloo yes that's it. Like it's so gorgeous, but all people stick to the Great Barrier Reef. Can can you explain explain for somebody from an yeah. international student watching this from overseas, maybe even yeah. Australian watching that at <laughs> home? Ex- just, just tell them about Ningaloo. Yeah, I don't know. Ningaloo is other level. Like when you're diving there, you literally are in an other world. Like and there's the whales passing through. There's so much reef still. Like it's more. I don't know. There's it's less crowded as well. So you go in and you literally dive in the deep and see all these beautiful creatures still that the reef is more intact and you can actually go i went diving with uh, whale sharks amazing it's like it's insane hey if you know how big they are and you're just like oh my god <laughs> they could literally swallow you whole if they wanted to <laughs> so just those kind of beautiful things and plus the fact compared to the east coast it's not that densely populated yeah so you really have the feeling to be out there in the wild while being in a beautiful reef <laughs> it's extraordinary isn't it? i mean if you can picture just standing on a deserted beach. It's white sand beach. Yeah. And you literally walk into this perfect blue water mm-hmm. and then you just walk in and put your mask on and you're just on top of the reef yes. with turtles and fish and then sharks going by. Mm-hmm. That's Ningaloo. And nobody around, like you literally have it to yourself. Yes, it's yeah. so cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Ningaloo, yeah. where else? Ningaloo, definitely. I would also recommend to go to the Northern Territories, visit Darwin and Kakadu National Park. Because again, like it's very, more desolate, like it's not as touristy, but it's gorgeous. Like, yeah, that's nature from other level, <laughs> including like, okay, there's like the big crocodiles and stuff, so you can't go really in the water, but that alone is so amazing. It looks like you're time traveling. <laughs> yeah, it's true, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, so true. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> it is so true. And that being said, I think it's cool that people would be able to go to the outback, like go somewhere in the outback and just even at night watch the stars. Like I've never seen as beautiful star skies because there's no light at all, right? Like it's so dark, but so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then... One more. I would obviously say the Whitsundays because I got stuck there for one year. Because, so <laughs> yeah, same like we said before, like it's like a paradise. You've got like the huge turtles. You can go snorkeling and swimming. There's the widest sand in the world. Like so beautiful. And so do you think overall, like looking at your journey, mm-hmm. do you think it's like, has that been a valuable experience for you to actually visit the country before choosing your place yeah i definitely think so because it's a huge investment right i know but but it was worth it for different reasons one is to get rid of my itchy feet for sure so i would be like sure like okay i choose the best spot but secondly because indeed now i understand why this place is a valuable place what it has compared to others such as like the relaxed lifestyle like all the nature because we got beautiful beaches but also we got a beautiful hinterland you can go like for a waterfall hike or like just a hike in the hinterland watch the mountains like there's so much to it but yet you're close enough to brisbane if you really want to see a city or like need something from a city life or so i feel like there's a lot of elements that the sunshine coast combines that no other place has and also and this is to my degree like whenever we talk about anything like naturally or ecosystem in australia i know <laughs> because i've been there and that, that makes it so much easier to picture your course <laughs> that's that's super good advice yeah <laughs> has there been anything for good or for bad that surprised mm-hmm. you i mean it's yeah. surprising yeah <laughs> kangaroos just on campus in some places is pretty surprising <laughs> yes <true. laughs> they do yeah i think you know what for the bed the birds Ah, interesting. Every, yeah, oh my, everybody <laughs> wants you, right? For the snakes and the spiders. And like, oh, don't go to Australia because they're dangerous snakes and spiders. But the most dangerous animals are the birds. Like they attack you, they're so aggressive. I've never seen in any country birds as aggressive as these ones. <laughs> Finn just destroyed Australian international education by speaking <laughs> the truth. So t- tell, them, tell them what that's like. <laughs> Sincerely, like, so often time when I- <laughs> International <laughs> student numbers. <laughs> But you can get rid of it, hey? Like, <laughs> there's a trick. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> it's, it's very true. It's hilarious because there's this, this season in Australia where, oh, is there a stick here? Like, where, where you'll, you'll just be somewhere, like, on the street, and yeah. you'll just see people walking around <laughs> holding a stick. It's quite ridiculous. And the cyclists with the... Yes. <laughs> see? There's a reason to it. Like, yes. they're not just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that is what, so what, cool. What's going on? Like, so just to clear it up, what's going on there? Like, what's, what's so, happening? There's like some kind of birds, like in particular the magpies and the plovers, and they protect their nests. So 
whenever you pass in the vicinity of their nest, which can be even like a football field away, like it's not even too close, but they just come straight at you to get you away, to scare you off, which is called swooping, right? And yep. so they come and they come straight at your head. It's so scary. <laughs> like I always go walking with my umbrella just in case. It's <laughs> a good idea. Yeah. What else has been surprising? So when I arrived here at first, I had lived like a long time in more countries with a, a high insecurity level. And so when I arrived here, I was like, so you can walk outside at night <laughs> since so early, like it's insane. And I think people don't always realize that, like there's actually like a luxury because in many countries, it's not that safe. You can even to show like the level of safeness. So at one point I was in the outback and um, I saw something interesting. So me in my journalist mind, I just put my car aside, get out of the car and walk off forgetting to switch off the oh, contact wow. switch off the lights the key is still in there still turning and the window is open and i'm like exploring my thing and all of a sudden i look around and there's somebody pulling up next to my car and i'm like oh no this is the moment to just drive off with my car right the person just stops not a joke switches off my lights and continues driving and I'm like oh my god that's awesome that's insane yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like that kind of yeah, I don't know. That's pretty unique, I think. It's pretty honest, isn't it? And I think mm -hmm. that's probably a good generalization, particularly outside. I mean, in the big cities, you have all the problems of yeah. big cities um, anywhere in the world. But once you're outside the big cities, mm -hmm. people are very honest. Yeah. Yeah. So true. Yeah, I really noticed that. And I thought it was very beautiful, actually, to see. Yeah, that is. It's kind of moving, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's like nobody's trying to ask you permission. Nobody's trying to get any reward for it. They're just doing a good deed and yeah. moving on with life. So true. Yeah. That's true. And on the same note, actually, I feel like in Australia, there's so much like public infrastructure that also is very unique, I think, to Australia. Like at the beaches, you've got like your showers, you've got toilets, you've got barbecue places, like, and it's all available for free and for mm. everybody. There's, there's something pretty unique as well, I reckon. Europeans can't get their head around that. They're like, if this was in Europe, yeah. it would just be destroyed by vandals. Mm -hmm. within 48 hours yeah um, but for us we're just like no of course it's there and we yeah. clean it up because the next person has to use it that's yes. kind of obvious so mm -hmm. yeah that's that's got, that's a nice one do you remember what it was like when you first arrived so before you decided to study and everything do you yeah. remember the moment when you kind of first fell uh -huh. off the plane and <laughs> went oh my god I'm here and Cairns is warm yes. too yeah true but yeah I already came in from Asia so I wasn't going straight from Europe but I remember it was just very different because I was had been like yeah traveling a long time in Asia and arriving in Cairns I remember everything was so big in a certain way like it, it's weird hey but like big shopping malls big roads like big parts of let's say civilization compared to like where I'd been it's like oh <laughs> this is huge and then next point I think was very impressive was like the rainforest so I start traveling in the rainforest and doing hikes and it's like oh this is so beautiful and then indeed I realized how friendly people were and like how much yeah, like the, the visitor center, it was so well equipped and it was so much for free. And it's like, you all just offer that kind of kindness. It was, that was very heartwarming actually. Yeah. And it sounds like you've got a pretty good travel list. So where else is on your list of places to go? In Australia. In Australia. Let's not, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> hold on. The world is not, the world is too big. Um, so I'm sure that <laughs> we'll be here a long time. <laughs> Definitely to Tasmania. Cause Tasmania is so beautiful. Like I've been there, but too short I felt like I only traveled a week but it's so much even though it's a small part in a small island I think it's worth so much more time because you've got all those beautiful highs the different landscapes and it's such a nice different vibe than compared to the mainland so definitely go to Tasmania Bay. <laughs> it's been so nice talking with you a real privilege and thank you for sharing <laughs> your experience with everybody on choosing your uni. No thank you so much for having this conversation. Awesome. <laughs>